Welcome to the very first episode of Talking About Blanks, where we'll be talking about blanks no one asked for, but we'll be literally talking about blanks. You fill in the blank and we will talk about it. I am your co-host of the day, Zach Stroud, and here beside me is Mr. Joshua Quinn. Mr. Joshua Quinn. Thank you, sir. Quinn. So, the inaugural episode, the very first episode ever, like I said, normally we will be talking about a an array of different topics, uh, but today we're going to take you behind the scenes on blanks no one asked for and give you an inside deep dive into what we do here and what it looks like that you don't see on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's kind of the purpose of this podcast is for you to get to know us a little bit better. Um, you know, 14, 15, 20 minutes is not a whole lot of time for us to really uh, express ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so this is a little bit more of an intimate setting and gives you the opportunity to get to know us on a deeper level. Yeah, some people need a little extra, right? Yeah, some yeah. people. So let's get this thing started off by talking about blanks no one asked for so far. What have we done up until this point? Josh, how long have you been with us? Uh, let's see. I guess now, what, about 10 months? Is that right? Yeah, we're, it's longer than that. Longer we're coming that up now. on your one year. Yeah. I think actually this week or yeah. next week is your one-year anniversary. Wow, we're gonna 10 have, months. We're going to have to celebrate. Yeah, we will. That's exciting. Some so, type of birthday cake or something? Absolutely. Anniversary cake? And something really scary will jump out of it. Put oh. you in the face. <laughs> Pranks no one asked for number two, but we won't talk about that yet. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about you coming into this thing. Um, you know, Josh uh, came in a little bit later than the rest of us. Myself, Mark, and Taylor uh, got this thing kicked off back in March of 2020 uh, when the world shut down. And then uh, this guy came along, I guess, around this time in 2021. So, yeah. what is this time? You know, it's uh, what. What is time? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting philosophical already. <laughs> wow. The show's just begun. Yep, yeah, blanks no one asked for. So let's talk about you coming in. How, how was that? What, what was your initial thoughts when I was hounding you about trying to get you over here to the Man, house? Man, when you first asked me, it was like, uh, you know, Josh, we've been, we've been, I don't even know. What did you say exactly? You were like... Probably something stupid. Yeah, uh, we're doing this thing where we uh, get on video and and do stupid stuff. <laughs> Basically, anything. You know, anything goes. Uh, I want you to come and join us. And I was like... How long did you put me off? Because I, I oh, think I approached you quite early in the channel's startup. Yes, you did. Startup. Uh, you did. But and you were just like, get this guy away from me. I couldn't come. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. You, you you couldn't get over here. And so finally, I, I took matters into my own hands and I drew up a yes. legitimate permission slip. Yes. You and did. I will have to post that on our social medias yep. after this episode You're airs. You're such a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like this long, elaborate, like permission slip. Yes. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, uh, made out to his wife. Shout out to you, Amy. Yeah. And, um, it's basically saying your husband has this great opportunity. It's basically like, you know, Willy Wonka sent you the golden ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I want to use it or not. <laughs> and so, you know, I sent off the permission slip. I had all of us sign it. It was very corny and cheesy, but oh, guess yes. what? Uh, it finally got me here. It worked. Yeah, it finally got me here. <laughs> so uh, when you came on, we were still recording in the living room. For those of you that are fairly new to the channel, you will not remember our living room days, um, but all the way up through, uh, I guess, the end of June, first to mid of July 2020, we were filming out of my living room. My wife loved that. Shout out to you, because we would literally bring the dining room table into the living room, move the couch away from the wall, and shove it onto the other couch. We had little to no walking room. In totally the room. rearranged your house. Absolutely. Every photo, every shoot, man. And she had to be like out of the house, or it would drive her nuts just seeing like one couch pushed up against the other couch, and I mean the dining room table in the living room. But you yeah, know, so I only did like two episodes here, so I didn't get the whole move things around things like y'all did yeah so, so you did thank goodness 
Your first episode was the royalty free remix yes. number two. Oh, McDonald. Yeah. And so, you know, a uh, fun fact from that video, if you've not heard this story yet, uh, my dear friend, Mr. Quinn here, um, the entirety of that episode forgot that when he's not singing, he had a secondary camera on him. Yes, I'm still being recorded, and, and I so- forgot all about it. I have no idea. So you see me like walk off stage, then come back on stage, plug my cell phone in. Oh, yeah, he's texting. Yeah, and crack up laughing, time. Uh, making all types of stupid faces. Oh, I love this face. Yeah. I can't see it. You got to come out from behind. You. Oh yeah. When he's trying not to laugh oh, during yeah. the uh, old lady all inside. swallowed a fly. Mm-hmm. So that was your first experience, and you were like worried that it wouldn't be good. And the whole time you're like, man, I just thought of this. Is, man, I'm just not going to be good. This is yeah. just not going to be not great. Be good. I'm not feeling this anyway. And then you get up there and just kill it with like Barry White's old oh, McDonald. Yeah. But yeah. you know that always gets the credit. That always gets the shining light, and we forget about your um, uh, this. No, no, not this old man. That was mine. Um, Which one? Oh, the uh, your last one, uh, dude. What was that? Was it the hokey? No, no. The hokey pokey. Man, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It was in the. I um, can do this faster than, than you. you. <laughs> Skip, Skip to, to my Lou, my darling. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Skip to my Lou. Was that it, a funk? Yeah. I think yeah. that was funk. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I liked your higher register in that. Yeah, you know, I like to get up there every now and then. Yeah. I like to go down too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that that's what I admire about you. You're uh, able to do the oh, highest yeah. of highs and the lowest <laughs> of lows. Yeah. You can scream. You can, not me. Yeah, you well, scream. Yeah. Mr. Me- Metallica over there. <laughs> I wouldn't relate myself to Metallica, but all right. And so, you know, only after the very next episode that you did was the Utter Nonsense Accent Game. Oh, And yeah. those were the only two experiences you had. Hey, and I had two uh, awesome moments in that, I believe. Like, you know, you had did. an awesome moment in the, the Royalty Free Remix. I had an awesome moment in the uh, Accents because I said something about hanky-panky instead of hokey-pokey. Yeah, you do the hanky-panky and you turn yourself around. Yeah. It should have been hokey pokey. It should have been, but it wasn't. No, and it made it onto our top fifteen list of season one. So yes, I'm glad I, that it I do wasn't. remember some of this history. So some of y'all are going to learn about me that I'm terrible with history and terrible with memory, but some of these moments I can remember, and that those are a couple of them. Yep. So after those two moments, we moved over here into the studio. No one asked for as you see it now which used to be a garage that never got used. And so we figured we'd put it to good use and make it a studio. And Mm -hmm. here we sit. Oh, yeah. Now we got a bonus room slash studio, but mostly studio. (laughs) (laughs) So we're we're in the studio now. It's so much easier because we can just kind of come in here. We're separated from the house. We're not disrupting anything inside. Um, But things get rather chaotic on a to say the least film day slash night so uh, we're gonna let you peek behind the curtain a little bit um at least we like to give the uh nuance that we are filming these every single week obviously that's not happening yeah we don't have that luxury (laughs) it'd be great if we did because you know if we had somebody just editing our videos that could do it in like a whip like a whole team we could actually film multiple things each week but that's neither here nor there um so we actually get together uh like one day about every month or month and a half and we do what we call batch recording and so taylor lives in a completely different state than we do and so normally we try to work around his schedule and whenever he can make it down here, we'll get here about, I don't know, 11, 11, 30, 12, sometimes a little bit later in the day. And we'll just have like five or six episodes lined up and we will record one after the other, after the other, after the other. And uh, so when an episode ends, literally stuff starts getting strode all over the studio because we're like changing clothes mm-hmm. we're taking thumbnails we're uh tearing down the green screen putting up the green screen and so by the time a film session day ends this room looks like a bomb has gone yeah. off yeah and it kind of looks like that right now but um <laughs> yeah it can get rather but what you're seeing right now looks extremely good or at so, least we hope yeah 
<laughs> yeah, we think it looks great. <laughs> you can have your own opinion. Yep. So after you moved into the studio, your first couple of episode experiences, let's talk about that. The first experience that you had in here, um, I do believe, was the Broga Challenge. So that, right? that was our i think that was our very first episode that we ever filmed in here yeah and so, so now, you, now you're running into that history where i can't remember <laughs> i don't remember my first video in here for some reason but if you say it was broga it was broga and i believe you yep because well nope no i'm sorry you lied i did lie <laughs> <laughs> that episode was the first episode that aired uh, but we actually filmed earlier that day because Mark couldn't make it out here until later. Uh-huh. So the session that occurred before that was, um, number one, um, we tried to do the Call Me Challenge number two. All right. So anytime uh, we talk yes. about episodes that people want to see more of, it never fails. Call Me Challenge comes up. Can we get another Call Me Challenge? We oh, need yes. a Call Me Challenge. And for you, those of you that don't know it by name, that is the episode where Mark and I called people that we knew, and we tried to get them to say buzzwords. We were timed, and the loser, of course, had to call someone using Speech Jammer, and I called my mother, and that is where the famous River River phrase comes from. It was atrocious. And so we're constantly getting asked, do another Call Me Challenge guess what there is a lost episode out there that is call me challenge number two yes and it's atrocious yes so uh i call my mom and guess what mama picks up mama comes great through. job mom. comes through in the clutch not only a fantastic lady but oh, yeah. a great supporter of the channel oh yes yes she's solid so as she rock. picks up she picks up i say hey, hey mom you know what are you doing i don't want to just jump right into it you know and try to get her to say that word i, I like to kind of you know reel her in a little bit so i'm like hey mom make a little small talk right quick yeah. hey mom what you doing oh i'm on the way to the funeral <laughs> <laughs> and to see, I look over at Zach, and Zach's like, "No, no, 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 cut! Don't, don't cut! Do that. <laughs> We're done. Abort We're done mission. Here. Yeah. <laughs> We're done here." Because <laughs> I mean, there at at this point, there was no question that Josh was dedicated to this channel oh, because yeah. I saw the look in his eyes, and he like, looked at me for approval. Like, yeah. am Can I, I do to it? continue? <laughs> Can I no. please? Can I no. please? No. Because at this point, we didn't know whose funeral it was. I can and I'm still like, make it work. Dude, I don't, I mean, <laughs> oh, man, that could have gone so many different uh, directions. There's very little give up or quit in this guy, and I cannot stand to lose. Yeah, so. so thanks for uh, <laughs> not doing that one. But he gave me a pass. So the episode I proceeded. It. I ended up losing. Um, you know, big surprise there. What did we end up doing? Uh, I did? called my grandma. Oh, yeah. And we had a. a very lengthy talk about mountain men oh, on yeah, television yeah. and um gosh i don't even remember the word she had to say no i, I remember baiting her like you know what are you doing she was like watching she had to TV. Say television was it i think it was i don't know it i'm was, watching it on the tv and we were like oh yeah that's good i think that's what it is if it's not there's another episode out there that's like that yeah so um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> speaking of like lost episodes and segments, um, we film a lot of stuff, and there's a good probably 35% of it that never makes it to YouTube. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes we'll just be filming and like we'll get halfway through an episode three fourths the way through an episode the whole way through the episode and this it's like does not work yeah, this is <laughs> this sucks it's dry and so at that point we just scrap it and we move on or um there'll be other episodes like uh the Randall commercial challenge number one uh where we just scrap one round and we release you know what yeah. we deem to be you the know better worthy content. footage yeah um so there's plenty of this footage just sitting on hard drives somewhere that we've not released. Um, you know, some of those episodes are, um, you know, we already talked about the Call Me Challenge number two. There's different rounds of stuff that don't get filmed. Do you remember uh, Royalty Free Remix Halloween Edition? Royalty Free Remix Halloween Edition. Mm. You were uh, a 
expected to sing Ghostbusters as a country song. Oh, no. <laughs> I do not remember that. <laughs> and um, I started off, I did This Is Halloween as an 80s pop song. Man, I'm terrible, man. I don't even remember that. Yeah. Anyways, you were like, I'm probably not, glad I don't remember that. You're like, I'm no, I'm no good at this. Yeah, I, and so I don't do good at certain me. things like that. I wish I did. I wish I was better. Keep practicing though. Maybe one day I'll be there. Zach's really good at that type of stuff though. He can just come up with like junk off the cuff when it comes to singing, and he's a great singer. Hey, it may not always sound like it on the camera. He's got it going on. You're my new favorite. Yeah. Just don't fan. tell the other guys that I said fan. that. <laughs> so speaking of all this unused footage, uh, we've actually started putting that unused footage to use just recently with our new ambassador program. So shout out to our two, as of the filming of this episode, ambassadors that we have, our ambassadors, Sam and Katie. So the ambassador program is rather simple. You support us and like show your love for the channel. And we're going to show some love back by giving you some nice, uh, fun little perks. Um, so like if you're commenting and you're liking our stuff on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, you know, that's great. Um, we really appreciate that. But where we really could use the help and the engagement is on YouTube. Uh, so, you know, you really stick out if you're commenting on YouTube, liking our videos on YouTube, sharing videos from YouTube. And so our two current ambassadors are like the full package. You know, they're doing all that stuff on all the social medias, mm -hmm. plus they're doing it on the YouTube. And they're like sharing their individual videos, like on their Instagram stories. And as a matter of fact, it wasn't long ago, uh, Katie just like went through and like liked every single post oh, yeah. that we have on instagram that was yesterday now that it's like tomorrow <laughs> and facebook and so like i'm just getting blown up notification after notification after notification yeah we love that stuff oh yeah so greatly appreciate it if you'd like to be a part of the ambassador program i always ask you show some love to us and we'll show some love back we want you to want us <laughs> just don't sing it because we don't want to get dinged for copyright but yeah, absolutely. Ambassadors get a free um, t-shirt and a free sticker with the ambassador logo on it. Also get discounted merch for life. You pay the base price for merch that we pay for the merch. That code will never expire. Mm -hmm. And also you get access to our unreleased, exclusive, never aired footage mm -hmm. on a super secret playlist that oh, yeah. you won't find on our public youtube page. some of that stuff's real good too <laughs> so thanks a lot ambassadors katie and sam oh yeah if y'all uh, comment on youtube uh we comment back and uh we like to talk so uh hit us up we do like to talk you yep. might get a response from the blanks page you might get a response from josh himself yep. oh yeah my personal page <laughs> i personally comment so i've got a question for you roll all right we have some videos that only have like one of a series. Yeah. Which one would you like to do and make multiple of? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Huh? Okay. So I'm just going to go with the first one that comes to my mind that I'm sure that I could, you know, if I thought a little bit harder, I could come up with a different one, but right off the top, of the tongue, the top of my tongue, the top of the your tip tongue. of the top of my tongue, the tippy top of your tongue <laughs> <laughs> is the uh, auto caption catastrophe episode that you, I, and Mark did, where he came back from Egypt, uh, and we came up with a script and sent the script through auto caption software, and then performed that script, and then we sent that script that we performed through auto caption software and performed that script. And somehow or another, we go from like, um, what do you, what do you mean? Where have I been to baby? Why do you wear the spelling bee? I love you. And yeah, it created some really hilarious moments and it made it even better that we had the laugh track in there. So oh, it gave man, like the this bloopers thing. episode. Oh yeah. Extreme could have been extremely long, which by the way, ambassadors, you might have mm. some of that additional blooper footage coming because literally there's more blooper footage than there was actual footage that yeah. made it to YouTube. But 
So Zach calls me on the phone and he tells me about what we're going to do. Oh, gosh. He Man, called- you want to talk about like, I felt like an elementary school teacher explaining a subject to a brand new student who speaks another language. Yes. So, <laughs> I mean, he was telling me what all we were going to do. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm coming. <laughs> And we get here, and we're, like, getting started. And he's like, I still have no idea yeah. what's going on. He explains on. it to me again. And I'm like, mm, okay. So shout out to Rhett and Link over at Good Mythical Morning. Thanks yeah. a lot for inspiring that idea. They absolutely perfected the art. And then we came along and just did our little thing. Mm-hmm. So I'll throw the question back to you. Is there anything you can think of that we've only done one of that uh, you'd like to see us do another? I mean, uh, so I, while you were talking about yours, I, I Figured you were going to bust one back at me. Mm. Uh, so uh, what I thought of, and maybe we have done it, maybe we haven't. Oh, gosh. If we, no, this is a bad no, question for we, the guy that can't remember have, anything. We have done I'd like one. to do a second Broga challenge. <laughs> you know what would be great? Six. Another random dance challenge. <laughs> uh, no. Sorry. No, no. So <laughs> I, I only remember one, but there could be two. So I'm thinking the ASMR stuff. Have we done multiple of those? We have not. One of my favorite moments in Blank's history is the Waffle House visit with Uncle Gary. I swear, I, I did not. It was kind of like the Gospel Muffin Man song. Oh, yeah. Like when you first present this idea, it's like, man, this is going to suck. Mm-hmm. This is going to be terrible. Yeah. And then Josh gets up there, and he's literally, I would – I would believe that Uncle Gary is on the other side of that camera. Oh, yes. Uh, you're talking Uncle he Gary. He was there. He was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. All so, right. Oh, sorry, were you going to say something? <laughs> so some, some of the lines in that, man, it's like uh, one of them was like, are you going to eat that? <laughs> and that, it was after like a 75-minute pause. Yeah. Are they good? <laughs> are they good? I and my, I, I can't help myself sometimes if you guys haven't noticed. Once I get tickled, it's very hard to get me to stop laughing. And I think that was no more apparent than oh, it yeah. was in our random commercial challenge number three yeah. with uh, uh, Michelangelo, the memory painter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, that was one of the best laughs I've had in a long time. Yeah, it was. So what? what is, if you had to think off the top of your head, what's your favorite video series so far? So this would entail something that we've done more than one of. Yes. Um, so let's see. I think um, I would say that the 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 Broga is, is probably one of my favorites. Uh, it's it's kind of a toss up between Broga and the Chess Chop. Chess Chop's so fun, but. Uh, yeah, the uh, the Broga when everybody's in there together, and you've got you've got like two people back here watching and making comments and busting people's butts about how <laughs> sorry they're doing, and then or, the I, other people are literally busting their butts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but then I mean, it's a shocker sometimes to see like uh, Taylor and Mark are not the most athletic guys in the world, and you don't say no. But um, man, they really put on a show like the last. Uh, the last time we did it successfully <laughs> yeah but uh and then you got me and zach it seems like we're the the um you got the pros and the joes yeah we like to consider ourselves the pros anyway but um we got us coming out there and and dominating if you've not seen uh broga challenge number three it's when we do three person yoga poses which i didn't know existed until we started researching for this episode there is a stellar three-person yoga pyramid in there Mm -hmm. that you have to go check out right now um may or may not like put it a link to it up Mm -hmm. there right now so you can go check that out all right so moving on um got a question for you another question riddle me this riddle me that all right so (laughs) we've done a bunch of videos yes we have and i would like to know which video did you think might be a failure but ended up being really good oddly enough 
it's uh, actually the video series that we've done the most videos of. Oh, wow. So I don't know. I'm going to pause for a split second and see if anybody at home can just be like shouting at the screen, whether mm-hmm. it's your phone screen or computer screen or TV screen. Uh, do you know which one that is? Pause. Replay. Yeah. Uh, it is the random dance challenge. Mm-hmm. So when I initially pitched this idea to Taylor, uh, because RDC number one, it's just Taylor and I, again, in the living room days. And I pitched this idea, and I really didn't know how it would go. To my knowledge, this is an original idea that I've not stolen or crafted from anyone else. And so I was a little weary. And then we started filming it. And after the first one that I did, I was like, man, this is gold. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't mean the pat myself. I mean, y'all really knocked them dead in the living room. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> of all the stadiums and stages around the world, nothing will beat the living room. No. But, yeah, I mean, it was great. You had the the shaking the head, not moving the arms thing. But, you know, out of the first one, you get the jam and genie, yeah. which is one of my favorite moments of all time. So, And then it's going on to do seven. At this point, we've done seven random dance challenges. Yeah. And so the next video series behind it with the most would be Random Commercial Challenge and the Broga Challenge with three videos each. So seven, I mean, it's overtaken the population. Oh, by four. But it's definitely one of the most fun ones to do because um, contrary to some people's beliefs, the Random Dance Challenge is 110% random yes. in every sense of the word once we put those movements into the cups and we shake them up there is no predetermined order of operations to the random dance challenge what comes out yeah we don't even know what order we're going in when we <laughs> sit behind the table it's just like come up with it all the stuff yeah i mean we'll sit down right, and click going record first. on the camera and we're like all right who's going first you're right, unlucky you contestant number one so yeah it's definitely one of the most unpredictable video series that we do and i think that's why it makes it so fun really This is a really terrible bridge, all right? So you know what thinking about all this stuff makes me do? What? It makes me laugh. And you know what? A little while ago, we asked our fans, what's a memory that makes you laugh every time you think about it? You see how I just like seamlessly transitioned Mm -hmm. from one topic to the next? Mm -hmm. Seamlessly. Yeah, you're seamstress. (laughs) Seamster, maybe. All right, so here's one of the comments that we got. And this was prior to her ambassador days from Katie. When my sister got stuck in a dress and a middle-aged man walked in on her in a thrift store. <laughs> stuck in a Yikes. dress. Yikes. Oh, um, yeah. That actually does remind me. Uh, I've bebopped around to a couple of different stores. I work for a little company called JC Penny. Mm. Um, and so I bebopped around to a couple of different stores and I worked in a store old, in old Wilson, North Carolina for one year. During this time, I witnessed some of the most horrific things that I have ever seen in my 13 years in the retail industry. One of those things is this. We have a public restroom. And I should probably preface this. This uh, JCPenney was in a really bad part of town, and the whole mall was shut down except for JCPenney on one side and K&W Cafeteria on the other side. But the entire inside of the mall was shut down. So anyways, bad part of town. This side of town was dying. Anyways, now I can get back to this part of the story. Get to go, not get to go, but I start to go into the public restroom. I open the door. I lie to you not. There is a naked gentleman, butt naked, Mm. stark naked, Mm. and he is bathing in the sink. He has his, and I'm walking in, and this guy's like straight shot. He's got his leg up on the sink. Full frontal or full rear? It's the rear. (laughs) And, you know, he's got his leg up on the sink, so, you know, everything's. Mm. Giving you the Captain Morgan. (laughs) And so he's got, like, paper towels, and he's taking a bath. I closed the door, made sure nobody else went in there. I was not about to tell this man to put on any clothes and exit the restroom because the last thing I wanted to do on that particular day was get tackled by a naked gentleman. Mm. Uh, So, yeah, that was a fun retail experience that I had. Looking back on it, it kind of makes me laugh. In the heat of the moment, I thought my eyes were going to burn out of their sockets. (laughs) 
<laughs> but do you have a memory that makes you laugh every time you think about it, Josh? Oh my goodness. Um, uh, it's, it's around Christmas time, and this was when um, there's a there's this hot popular toy that every child is wanting, and it's called the Sleep and Snore Ernie. Y'all ever heard of that? How old are you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> The right, Sleep and so, Snore Ernie. So it's like, all right, you're going to have yeah, to Google it and not see, a how, 2010 see how old toy. it is. But anyway, all right, so I'm in Walmart. Me and my dad, we're out Christmas shopping. And this is, it was very funny to us. But uh, are you Googling it now I to am. see what you Continue years talking, sleep and please. Snore okay. Anyway. I just want to really see how old you are. Okay. Uh, so we're walking around in Walmart and, you know, they're all gone. They had Walmarts back then? Oh, yeah, they had Walmart. <laughs> All right, so the lady, she comes over the intercom, and she's got quite the accent. Or, hi, do you want a sit and spin, Ernie? Not a sit and spin, Ernie, a sleep. <laughs> sleep and snore, Ernie. She's not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> but she could have been. Oh, uh, Maybe. Um, but so he, what did she say? Okay, so. And with what accent? Um, I don't if it know, wasn't You'll just one. have to guess the accent. So. Uh, like I said, we're walking around the store, and all of a sudden, this voice comes over the intercom. And it's like, <laughs> to the person who wanted the the sleeping snow, Ernie. Snow. <laughs> yeah, snow. It's like, no, it's not snowing outside. <laughs> <laughs> the sleeping snow, Ernie, please come back to the toy section. Uh, they finally found one, I guess. You know, nice. one of the most popular toys of its in what what year was it? It was 1997. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're not as old as I thought you were. Yeah, so still a young in at heart. I didn't want the sleeping snow on you, though. <laughs> sleeping <laughs> snow. I want that young. Oh, boy. That's great. So we do have a fan question from Rachel M. who asks, What's something really stupid you would do on the channel if someone offered you one million dollars? Mm. One million dollars to do something really stupid on the channel. I mean, we do stupid stuff on the channel for free. So yes. This has got to be like really stupid if we're going to be charging somebody a million bucks right. for it. Yeah. What can we do? And we're already nuts enough uh, without getting paid. So, um, I, I would let me think on, let me marinate on it. It would have to be like probably a short episode. Um, I'd turn myself into a a human bulletin board and like, (laughs) y'all can just take paper and staple it to my chest and my back. (laughs) Maybe we can just go with post-it notes. Do you like pain? Oh, yeah, post-it yes. notes. Yeah. But, see, that's not really stupid, though. Not It's not worth a million dollars. So you, you'd suffer for one million dollars. I would probably – this is a bold statement, but Ooh. there's not much I wouldn't do for a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you. I'd, I'd do a lot of crazy stuff for a million dollars, but – Hey, shoot us some ideas for what we could do for a million dollars. Yeah, maybe there's some crazy millionaire out there that Mm -hmm. is just looking to blow through a million bucks. Yeah, are we going to trust him that he's going to actually come through? Oh, we'd have to get half up front. Oh, okay. It's at least half. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, man, like. Set my house on fire and and roast marshmallows while it's burning, maybe? I don't know. I mean, you could easily get you another house after that. Yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, remove a couple important documents or whatever and then uh, light her up. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Oh, yeah, so like uh, fill it full of like some gas or something, you know, and then have always had one of them bow and arrows with the little um, – always wanted one with the torch on the end of yeah, it, you know. Mar- like, giant marshmallow. Uh, them Duke boys, you know. <laughs> Oh, Lord. (laughs) Yeah, so um, we do have one more fan question, and that's by uh, Alejandro O. We have fans? We do have a few. And so if you're not familiar with Mr. Alejandro, Alejandro has actually done quite a bit of work for the channel. 
um, as a fan, really appreciate his work. A lot of the drawings that you see come from him. He actually designed our t-shirt design, uh, which if you've not seen it, go ahead and check it out now at blanksnoanasked4.threadless.com. Shameless plug. Mm-hmm. It's the Beneath the Skin graphic. One of the best t-shirts it's on pretty rad. that page. I could have never done anything no. that extravagant. I can't even draw a stick figure. <laughs> it has our likeness <laughs> as skeleton heads. Mm-hmm. Pretty sweet it kind of reminds me of like the uh, appetite for destruction guns and roses album uh but anyways thanks alejandro his question is if money wasn't an issue what video idea would you make a reality money wasn't an issue right off the bat i'm doing a chest chop challenge and i'm hiring a bunch of legitimate professional wrestlers i'm talking like big beefy guys like the big show Mm -hmm. the great Kali. uh who's another really big dude that can give a chop like none other um oh dude back when i used to watch it who was that guy uh dude what was his name i mean he wouldn't be so good nowadays but let's just do rick flair since he's like the originator of the chest chop have those three guys represent one of us each and we participate in the trivia questions but if we get something wrong that person's representative actually does the slapping and so like we'd walk out of here with like concave chests oh yeah what would you do unlimited money unlimited grand theft auto 5 (laughs) cheat code edition oh yeah um up up down down a x b yeah and like l1 i know i just combined two and uh I said A and X, oh, which yeah. is like crossing over from PlayStation Xbox to Xbox. And, yeah. So please don't find me and murder me. Yeah. Um, so like we would do one of our royalty-free remixes with like maybe one of our favorite musical singers. Uh, I think I'd like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty I sweet. Mean, Who you got? Who's I, your front man you're inviting? Uh, man. Ah. Uh, Shoot, any classical rock. We we would have to we'd have to do like a tag team edition for this one. It'd be duets. Oh yeah. And it'd be Josh and I versus uh Steven Tyler. <laughs> and uh, just for fun, uh Axel Rose. Mm. What a combo, huh? Mm-hmm. Axel Rose would probably like give up halfway through. This is so stupid. Yeah, you are Kick idiots. the camera over and storm out. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. I'd like to see that happen. Yeah, so, Steven just, Tyler, Axel Rose, if you're out there, even though I just like completely dogged Axel Rose. <laughs> if you're out there and you want to participate, let us know. Mm-hmm. Get up with us. Blanks don't ask for at gmail.com. All right, so as we start to wrap up our first episode here, um, you know, let's talk about a little bit about the future of blank someone asked for. What do we want out of this channel? What do we want for you guys out of this channel? Um, you know, where, what are we looking at? So five years from now, Josh, where do we want to be? Oh, I'd love um, – I really want to do some, like, out-in-the-world stuff, like – uh, I, I love being in the studio and love doing stuff in here, but like I want to do some like live stuff, like out on the streets of where we're at, you know. Uh, yeah, just uh, do in, interacting with like other people that we don't know at all, and just getting that um, that reaction from people we totally do not know at all, and actually being able to see it because I mean. YouTube's great, and we get to uh, we get to make you laugh, but we don't actually get to see that reaction. So that's one thing I would really like to see: the real reaction of what people see when we do our stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's awesome. It's kind of like almost surreal, and even now, like we have no idea who watches our content because when I go into our analytics on YouTube. You know, there's a like more than half of the people I'd be willing to say 75% of the people that watch our channel aren't subscribed to the channel. So we have no idea who they are. But people that I know will just like, I'll see them and I've not seen them in months. And they're like, man, that last episode y'all did was great. And I'm like, 
I had no idea you watched. That's pretty freaking awesome. Like, I didn't even really know that you paid attention to anything. And they're like, man, we loved your stuff. So, yeah, it's great. And, you know, people will compare us to Impractical Jokers sometimes, and that is high praise. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know. Those dudes are great. Absolutely. I'd love to do some stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, and which reminds me of a story. So, uh, Zach, he is at, I think you told me you were at Sam's Club, right? Is this and, the Mr. H story? Uh, it could be. Um, yeah, I think it is where the woman just walks yep. up to you and she's like, you go ahead. Cause you do the, you, yeah. You so, can do it way better than um, I can. Uh, Mr. H, a huge friend of the channel. Um, you know, we started around the same time period and, uh, we're actually planning on having him be a guest on the show, either the next edition or the following one. Uh, so I'll save a lot of the backstory for that one. Cause I'd like to get his side of it as well. Anyways, Mr. H, great guy, has absolutely blown up on YouTube. So excited for this guy and where he's going. But anyways, I'm wearing some Mr. H merchandise. I go out on my, you know, errand run. It was my day off from work. I go to Sam's Club. If you're not from the U.S., Sam's Club is like Walmart, but for like bulk items yeah and club, lots and club lots. members you have to have a membership to go in so anyways wearing my mr h merchandise i'm pushing a cart around sam's club getting my water and a bunch of other stuff literally the last thing on my mind is getting approached by someone and this lady stops me and she's like i love your shirt i watch mr h on youtube all the time and I'm just like floored, like literally. And I told this to Mr. H. I'm like, I forgot how to speak English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just not used to people. I mean, like I've never worn a blank stone asked for shirt out in public. And they're like, dude, you're that guy from blank stone asked for. And so I had to stop and like really kind of assess what's happening yeah. right now. I'm like, I mean, yeah. this is a person you don't know. You don't have know. no idea who this person is. And by the way, they approach you. Mr. H lives in the UK. Yeah. Like he's like way overseas. And so never seen him, never met him no. only, you know, like on the TV screen bucket list item, by the way. So she's like, I love Mr. H. I love your shirt. I watch Mr. H all the time. And I'm just like, that is awesome. Yeah. Mr. H is a great guy. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, she was like, yeah, I discovered him a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago or something. She was like, I, th I think I saw you on one of his videos. And this was like a mere days, maybe a week, week and a half after our collaboration video had come out where I was uh, reacting to or we were reacting to one another in how we pronounce different words. Um, and so that was just a really cool moment. And I get into my car and I like had to record like myself, like telling Mr. H like the breakdown of what just happened. And then I'm like, you big idiot, you should have got a picture or something with her mm -hmm. or like a video. And like, and I told Mr. H this, I was like, the next time this happens, I'm going to whip out my phone and we're going to like Facebook messenger video call with this person. Yeah. Did you tell him about, um, how you had to get out of the store? Did you tell? No, you didn't get into that. But anyway, how I had to get out of the store. Yeah, you had to get out of the store. Like they had to come and take the doors down so Zach could get his head <laughs> out I was of the like, double door. Dude, you where were are wondering you where going I was going with this. <laughs> I was like, this is not a part of the story. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie. Even though it was a small little portion, like um, that's just cool. Yeah, and it's an honor. If if I'm if I'm looking for the future of blanks, you know. Fame, I don't, I don't necessarily want to say that I want to be famous, but it would be great to be able to do what we do one night every month and a half to be able to call this like a career mm -hmm. choice and do this like for fun, but also to get like enough money to make it yeah. by just doing this ridiculous stuff. And so uh, in five years, uh, I think it's, a little extreme to say that we have quit all quit our jobs and we're doing YouTube full time. But in five years time, I'd like to be able to walk around town and people recognize me uh, that I don't know. As that and idiot who does like, stupid stuff. Hey, you're the guy that was cock a doodle dude and yeah flipping pancakes and <laughs> shimmy shaking a <laughs> washing machine shake exactly one of my favorites. I mean, can you imagine five years from now we're going to be doing like year five and the best 
top 15 moments from yeah. season freaking five of yeah. Blanks Don't Ask For. Geriatric it. yoga. <laughs> Broga. We're, we're with the Cirque du Soleil crew. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So what are some bucket list items that you want to check off? Oh. Some things that, you know, you just absolutely have to see us do before Blanks No One Asked For is retired, which I hope is never. Yeah. But. Because we're friends for life, right? Um, let's uh, let's just let's take uh, blanks no one asked for on the road. You know, do some like let's go let's go to Vegas. You took the words out of them. No mind. way, absolutely. And I'll tell you, uh, shout out again to Sam. Uh, Sam has guaranteed non expiration dated future vip passes to our tour and i've already guaranteed this oh, yes. to him you know he's he's already like right now like hey guys when are you going on tour and i'm like hey first of all i appreciate the sentiment yeah. second of all we got to make sure people are going to show up to the same <laughs> i'm not traveling across the world to have three people show up <laughs> and then we're like in the whole thousands of dollars hey we could be real personal with the meet and greet <laughs> Like, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> All right, bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, absolutely, that's a bucket list item. And, I mean, you know, obviously we would have to start. There, there is a um, – uh, on my way to Fayetteville, uh, which was one of the other locations that I worked in uh, most recently, I passed by this place on the left-hand side that's called the Big Barn Theater. I don't know if you've ever passed by it. It's over there by the fairgrounds. Um, but it's on 13, mm-hmm. like you're headed to Fable. Big Barn Theater, and and it just looks like that type of place where you would just like sell tickets, people would come up, you'd have a stage and do your thing. And I, I, there has been multiple occasions when I was driving back and forth to Fable every day, I would look at that Big Barn Theater, and I'm like, hey, three years' time, we're selling tickets locally. Mm-hmm. We'll have 30 people show up, and we'll do like a random dance challenge live. We'll do a random commercial challenge live or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's not going to be anything extravagant, but kind of like, you know, what you were talking about earlier with doing stuff out in the field, Mm -hmm. just being able to like play off of the reaction of the crowd. Oh yeah. Like would just be a dream come true. Oh yeah. Then get a couple audience uh, members to come up there and do some random dance with us or some yoga with us or. um, Now you're talking. Some songs. Now you're talking. Oh yeah. So we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, Hopefully you have stuck with us to the end. Uh, This has been talking about blanks, the show about the show, and a bunch of other stuff. If uh, you can fill in the blank, we'll talk about it. Um, Every third Thursday of every month, unless something goes seriously wrong and we're just not able to release an episode. But um, bear with us. This is our first episode. Mm -hmm. This is the first run. This is the first draft. We don't know what we're doing. Yeah, we're still trying to get the kinks worked out. (laughs) This is a very intimate setting, whereas normally we set the camera and like we can chop and edit a lot of stuff. It's a little bit more intimate. So don't take this for face value and just not watch any further episodes because you think it's crap. Yeah, it'll only get better from here. (laughs) Absolutely. If you like this one, you're going to love the next one. Oh, yeah. So, Josh, where can they find us on oh, social medias? They can find us uh, YouTube, Twitter. They're uh, watching us on YouTube. So. Oh, yeah. Well, duh. <laughs> so, we're on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, what else am I missing? Facebook. Facebook. Uh, I that's think about that's got the it, right? of it. Hey, you can just type us in on the internet and it'll pull us up. Yeah, it does auto population for us now. Mm-hmm. We feel important. Yeah. Um, also, uh, if it's not already there, the objective is to not just have this video version for you to enjoy, but to also have the audio version uploaded to wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Music, Spotify, all those fun places. Um, again, if it's not already there, the objective is it will be there very soon. And if we ha- if we haven't told you already, you know, you got to like and subscribe and comment. You absolutely, well, I don't want to say you have to, but it'd be greatly appreciated. Yeah, we'd love you even more if you did. Yeah, I mean, we love you now. We love you long time. <laughs> you, nope, maybe you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, anyways, if you want to buy some merch like I'm wearing, like he's wearing, we've got a great merch shop, and we're always adding new merch. 
You can find that merch shop at blankstoneasfor.threadless.com. Shameless plug number two of the day. If you have any suggestions for merchandise that you would like to see, maybe a playoff, something pop culture related, please let us know. We will do our very best to get that taken care of for you. Also, what combination of Blank's crew members would you like to see on a future episode of Talking About Blank's? Josh and I started off the inaugural episode, and we've also got two other guys floating around out there that we have the opportunity to bring on to an episode. Um, So what combination would you like to see? Myself and Josh and Mark, Mark and Taylor, you know, what are we looking at? And if there are there any guests that are uh, legitimate contenders to come on the show that you'd like to see us welcome on? All right, guys, that has been the initial episode of Talking About Blanks. We made it. And so now we are going to send it off for the evening the way we plan to send off all of these episodes. This has been Talking About Blanks. And if you can fill in the blanks, we'll talk about it. But wait, there's more. Still got that itch for more blanks no one asked for? Click that bottom left video down there to see the content that YouTube thinks would be the best for you.